old school bodybuilding clothing company. If leg day was yesterday, and now you're wondering why toilets are so damn low, you are definitely old school. If you're the only athlete at your gym that knows there's a contest today, and it's to see who trains the hardest, you are old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. Welcome back to another edition of RX Muscle Spotlight. I am Dave Palumbo, and today's competitor that we have here has set a record of sorts at the Masters Team Collegiate Nationals this past weekend. He's been on the show before we have him back. Welcome, Tom Picaro. You are the two-time Team National, three-time Collegiate National Champion. How does that sound? I think it uh, it sounds pretty nice. Um, <laughs> you know... I actually decided to do this show pretty late. Um, once they changed the teen rules, and I realized that if I get another two wins, then like you can't touch that record because you can't compete until you're 18 anymore. That's right. It used to be that you could compete as, as young as you wanted. You Now you have to be 18 to compete. Cody Lewis had three consecutive teen national over, uh, overall titles. I think he would have one collegiate in there or something like that too. Yeah, yeah, he did in his last year. Right, and then you um, did two teens, but you have how do you have three collegiates at nineteen years old? Um, I took college classes over the summer when uh, I was in high school. When you were seventeen, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, so I had uh, college credits. They said good enough. That's right. I, you, yours might be more impressive because you were actually a, a college student at the time, three time, three years in a row. So, but. I, yeah, you're right. The record, I didn't even think about it. The record can never be broken now because because no one can compete at under 18. I don't know why they did that, to be honest with you, but it is what it is. I, I heard it has something to do with, um, uh, especially young women competitors backstage, like yeah. feeling uncomfortable, stuff like that. But. I don't know. It's, it's, they, they make all kinds of crazy rules. We live in, you know what it is? We li- it's not the NPC's fault. I blame it on society because we live in this cancel culture and they're always looking to take cheap shots and find weaknesses in every business's armor, so to speak. And then they look, oh, they got they got young kids competing. They're exploiting them. You know, you can't have this. And so everyone's so afraid to do anything that's not in line because God forbid that, you know, they're, they're going to come start scrutinizing what everyone's doing. So it is unfortunate. But you know what? I got to just take my hat off to you because you know what? Not only did you win the collegiate nationals and the uh, team nationals this time, you did it at like five foot nine, 200 and like almost 25 pounds. That's impressive. That's a lot of muscle for a 19 year old kid to have. I, uh, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> I've been working hard over this last year and uh, I added on two new people to my team that are helping me out a lot. Um, so this year I started working with uh, Chris Aceto. Oh, okay. And, I didn't know you worked um, with him. Cool. Yeah. And uh, Guy Sister Nino was helping me out with my training a little bit. Awesome, awesome. I, I got to talk to Chris about you because I didn't. Even, we didn't even. Chris is funny. Chris doesn't mention things to me. He. I have to like find out through other sources, and then I'm like, Chris, you didn't tell me you were working with this guy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Chris doesn't but, tell much to me. It's like um, I was shocked this morning when he used an adjective in an email. Uh, you know. <laughs> he complimented you. You actually look like a young Chris Aceto a little bit, minus the, the you know he had the blonde hair, you had the dark hair. Let me ask you this question though, okay? Um, you win collegiate nationals, okay? You win team nationals again, okay? And obviously, I know you did it for the record because you really didn't need to do it because there is a bigger goal here, which a lot of people don't even know. Do you want to? You want to announce it? Um, I'm going to be competing at the USA Championships uh, this Friday, actually. Awesome. Um, Great and I think the doing the teens will help just because I'll be fresh in the judge's mind. Absolutely. How old was Cody when he when he did the, the he was 20, wasn't he? He won USA's at 20. That's right. Right. So this is if you ever won the USA, I mean, let's fantasize a little bit here. 19 years old. Now, when were you when did you turn 19? Uh, August. So we're, we're a late 19. OK, we're so still you're late. like almost 20 years old right now, but you yeah. would still technically be a teen. So that goes into the record books, you know. And I'm feeling really good about the package we're bringing in. Let's pull Very some pictures good. up, Tyler, from his Instagram from the show this past weekend. 
you know, you, you have a lot of mature muscle, and there's a reason why. You know, we, the last time I interviewed you, I think you told me you started training when you were 12 years old, right? Yeah, yeah. And so it's been almost eight years now. Yeah, I mean, you, you you almost have like you know some guys start in their 20s and then, then they don't have as much muscle maturity as you. But you've been doing this a very very long time, and you I think I believe if I'm not mistaken, you told me you did this to stay out of trouble, right? Uh, no, it was because it was something I thought that would make my dad proud of me. Oh, okay. it was too <laughs> and I, uh, I and I was a tubby kid, so I didn't want to be fat anymore. Now, being this disciplined as as a teen, you know, is it, something that you don't see a lot, and you have a lot of just. I think I always say you're like an old soul, kind of like you know, a lot of maturity. You, you don't even live at home. You you moved out. You live with your fiance at 19 years old. Not many teens do that these days. It's just too expensive, and so you have a lot of maturity in that sense. Do you see bodybuilding as like a long term business for you? I mean, have you evaluated what you want to do with it and where you want to go with it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I want to take it basically all the way. I want to do this full time. Yeah. Um, I'm still going to get a degree, so I have something to fall back to when I retire. Sure. But um, the feedback I got back from the judges and during the live commentary this year uh, at Teens uh, really solidifies the idea that I, I can make a decent living doing what I actually want to do. Are you? Uh, what are you doing in terms of? I always like to ask younger guys this because they they have better ideas than uh, us older guys. What do you do in terms of social media? In terms of taking that social media following and, and actually marketing yourself through the social media marketing to, to make money for yourself? Well, in all honesty, I haven't been doing that much. I've been doing more uh, online coaching, stuff like that. Okay, but using it for but, that purpose, um, for coaching, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I know it's something I need to pick up, though. Um, Do you find that you have know. more, get a lot of clients because because you're younger and because you are online and because you've been you're so successful, obviously, at competition? Absolutely. Um, it seems like it's a little bit more approachable to some of the, I don't know what to call them, the gym shark generation. <laughs> and ask, uh, yeah. Another younger person for advice. They, they feel more comfortable. Right, right, right. Do you have like any older people who work with you? Like that, like, are just like, you know, like, masters no, guys? No, no. <laughs> no. It's, got, no, it's hard. Of, it's hard. It's definitely hard to do that. Yeah. I have to find a master's competitor and, and they usually know what they want. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. But, you know, I always say, look, you know what? If you're in the best shape of your life, you just won a big title, why not do the USA? It's one week later. Was that the goal the whole time and then you just decided to jump in teens or were you planning to do both all the time, all the way? The original goal was uh, just to do USAs, just go for the pro card. Gotcha. But, uh, then the NPC changed those rules um, yeah. for the teen competitions mm -hmm. and I decided to go for the record, make a little – like a little history stamp and then move on. Did what did and what did Chris think when you told him that? Um he just said sure. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him if he thought it was a good idea. Can we do yeah. it? Will it mess up this other prep? They're like, yeah, let's go. Just you know, why not? The idea was that I was coming in so much better than I had the years before. Right. We probably wouldn't need to peak, just fly in, take the wins, and then do right. the peak for USA's. Yeah, now that was another question I wanted to ask you. When when you when you're backstage with these other teen guys, and and I, they obviously all know who you are because they you won before, and you were there already. And are they like nervous? Are they like talking to you? Like are they asking you for advice? I mean, it's got to be intimidating for them. If I was a teen guy, maybe the first time I'm doing teen nationals, and I see you there, I'm like, oh, sh this guy's back! Holy shit! What am I gonna do? You know? Um, I. Uh... I like making friends backstage. So I always try to find other people around my age to talk to. Yeah. Um, it really just le relieves a lot of tension, I think, if sure. you have a friend on stage. So, I was always like that backstage too, but there's always some guys that like are in a bad mood back there. You, ever know, you know those guys I'm talking about? They don't talk to anyone. They sit in the corner. They're like acting like they're at a, at a military battle or something like that, you know? I mean, I get it. You've been dieting, but we all have. Yeah. No, no, they think they have to have this like, like I'm going to war mentality. Come, I told yeah. Kamali, I, you know, I always have King Kamali on our show. I'm like, Kamali, when you first competed, that's what you were like. You wouldn't talk to anyone backstage. And I was always backstage making jokes and trying to just chat with people to kind of keep the, the – and he was like on the side all mad. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I, he goes, I had a bad attitude <laughs> backstage. <laughs> <laughs> well, he did that intentionally, right? He wanted to drum up. Uh, I think, like, but then once he actually started to actually, you know, do well, he actually had a better attitude. I think maybe it was just like an insecurity thing. I don't know, but um, okay. yeah, you, know, you should. I always tell people the work is done in the gym. 
when you get to the show, you should have fun. If you don't enjoy the process there, right? I mean, then you're wasting it. You're doing the wrong thing. You're in the wrong profession. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to suffer for that long, you, you should try to enjoy the day. Right. When you look at today's younger guys in your generation now, who are coming up and competing? What do you what what trends do you see? Do you see less people going to bodybuilding, more going to men's physique, classic? Yeah, I do, and uh, I personally find it pretty troubling mm -hmm. um, and a little worrisome for open in the future. Yeah, but um, it, it is siphoning off a lot of talent. Do you think they're just doing that though because it's an easier first step? In other words. They didn't have That's that when I was competing, so you had to go to bodybuilding. So now it's like, well, you know what? Let me try classic first because, you know what? I don't have to be quite as big. And then, you know, if I get big enough, I can go to the open after that, you know? I, I really hope that's what it is because I do see a lot of people, even as adults, who get into it and then want to do men's physique or classic physique. Mm. And the reason is just I'm not big enough yet. They're kind of afraid. Right. Right. Um, which is nothing wrong as long as you're using it as a stepping stone. Yeah. But like you said, if people just don't ever go to the open, it could the talent pool right. could, you know, go down the toilet. But right, right. So there's going to be some less talent, but um, hopefully not that much less. When you have guys approach you to help them with coaching and, and getting advice, you know, via you know your social media, are you seeing more people that are asking advice about men's physique and, and competitions like that? Yeah, most of them want to do classic. It, that's the big one. Um, men's physique isn't really big anymore, yeah. from what I can see personally. Right, because well, people like, want to everyone pose. wants to be a classic bodybuilder. I mean, everyone wants a tiny waist. So yeah. people want to pose. That's why. I mean, who, what, if who wants to stand up there and just you know in a, in, a, in a board shorts? I mean, it's if you got the great physique to to to, to I guess match that division. That's one thing. But I think most people want to do something up on stage, right? I mean, the posing routines are fun. Yeah, they are. And if you get a, a good posing coach, you can really make something special. Sure, sure. Now, when this is another question I, I have, and this you're a good person to ask because you're in the right age range. When people, you know, your age start using supplementation, you know, I find that like guys nowadays are using like these, uh, like the first thing they want to buy is a pre workout or an amino product. Do you, th do you think there's a lot of misinformation as to what's important to a nutritional program out there? I actually don't. Um, most of the people that are actually in the gym are, are avid watchers of people like uh, Derek from More Plates, More Dates, like very science driven people drilling in what each individual ingredient does. Right. Um, that doesn't mean that I'm also seeing a lot uh, more young kids thinking they know a lot about PEDs when they don't know much of anything yet. You yeah. know. That, yeah, that's the only thing I, I worry about. When, when I see a lot of these young kids, they're more interested in, in, in learning about what, you know, esoteric PED that they can get through gray market means because it's, it's, it's kind of on the borderline of legal rather than yeah. worrying about, like, am I getting enough vitamins, minerals, enough essential fats, enough protein in my diet? I, that, that, that's the real point I was trying to make. I, th I feel like guys are, are more focused on the – performance aspect of, of, of the supplements as opposed to the bare essentials that people really need. They very much are, but they're good at the basics as far as the nutrition goes. Oh, well, that's good. They may not understand the, important, the importance of essential fatty acids and fiber mm -hmm. or stuff that is much more nuanced, mm -hmm. but most people are at least trying to track their macros. Right. That's a big step. It's a big step, yeah, because most people just in the past just thought just eat a lot of calories and they didn't have any idea that, that protein and fat were more important than carbs and stuff like that. Well, that's good. That's that's at least good to hear. You know, I, I think it's important that guys like yourself, because you are younger and you do reach a younger crowd, educate the people coming up. I mean, I can educate as much as I can, but if the people don't watch what I'm doing because – they don't relate to something, you know, maybe me because I'm older or something like that, you know, and maybe it's going to take for them to be five, six years into their bodybuilding career before they're going to transition to listening to someone like myself and because they want to get to that next level. You know, it's great that there's people like yourself that are there to, to kind of pull them in and say, hey, guys, this is how it's done. You know why? I did it already. Look, I've been doing this for nine years, you know. That's actually something I have a bit of a, a gripe with is – uh you know, I'm going to school for pharmacology now. Oh, cool. I, uh, I decided to go away from from actually practicing medicine and go into drug development. <laughs> Way better, um, better, much better choice, I might add. <laughs> well, I mean, I am um, a very big nerd on the PEDs, and 
the the thing I'm griping with is what do I talk about it a little bit and mm-hmm. try to steer towards better use right. or just not talk about it at all? You know? I think education is always important. You know, I, it's, but the problem is when you don't discuss something and you have that knowledge, it's like it's like trying to it's like if I tell my son sitting here watching the thing, it's like if I tell my try to not tell my son about anything that's going on because I don't want him to get involved in it. He's gonna hear it from someone else and he's gonna go do it the wrong way. So I might as well yeah. hear it the right way, you know. If you, you know. so I okay. think you have a response sense of responsibility. And I think people because you do have a now that you are, you know, in pursuing pharmacology, I think you're gonna be much more believable to some of these other yahoos out there that you know portray themselves as drug experts. Hey, look, you know what? I got a degree in this stuff. Yeah, they don't yeah. teach all this stuff in school, but I understand the biomechanics and the biochemistry of what's going on with these drugs and the pharmacology of what's going on because I studied it. I mean, you have that, that gives you another layer of, of uh, I guess you could say, believability and legitimacy. Credibility. Yeah. Yeah. So, what happens after the USA? You shut it down for the rest of the year? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, because I thought you were going to say if I win the USA, I'm going to do the Tampa show the week after. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not ready for that. I truly <laughs> believe we're bringing a good enough package to get a pro card this week. Yeah, like I believe that, like deep in my heart. Okay. Um, but I don't think I'm ready to step on a pro stage in any capacity. Okay. Well, um, plan to... is if I get the pro card or not, take about a year and a half off season and around Christmas time get my gyno cut out. Yeah. Um, just, you know, blitz it and then have probably a full year of off season. Right. And if I'm a pro, then I'll go for one of the first shows after the Olympia. And if I'm an amateur, I'll go for nationals in December. Gotcha. You know, I, like I was going to say, if you place top five, and I'm not saying that you, you might win, but if you place top five, you, sh- you should be hur- hipping and hooraying up there because you know what? These lineups have been pretty deep in the last, you know, big national shows I've seen. From USA and North American national. So, man, if you can if you can nail a top five, that would be awesome. And if you win, that's going to be another record, another another record for sure out there. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, huge congratulations! Number one on the uh, the two wins this past weekend, a teen and collegiate nationals, and and for kind of having a, your own little record for now, five total wins at those shows. And good luck this coming weekend at the USA Championships. Thank you very much, Dave. Hopefully, we'll uh, have reason to have another one of these. I soon. would love it. Yeah, I, I hope I hope <laughs> I can interview you again <laughs> and uh, give my best to Chris. All right, of course. All right, and that is, that's going to take us to the end of another episode of RX Muscle Spotlight. I'm Dave Palumbo with Tom Picaro. We'll see you next time. <laughs>